First, there are stakeholder interviews. Who remembers what a stakeholder is? Right, so anyone who has a stake in the project, who can influence the project. So anyone with the authority or responsibility for the product that's being designed. This can include the CIO, but it can also include users. People sometimes forget that. A lot of times when people think of a stakeholder, they just think of who's holding the money. Right, of course that's important and they are a stakeholder, but they're not the only stakeholder. Now, stakeholder interviews start at the very beginning of the design process. In fact, it's the first thing you want to do. Before you do any user research, you need to sit down and talk to your stakeholders. Why do you think that is? Because you identify what their wants and needs are for the, for the outcome of this project. Right, so you want to identify what their wants and needs are for the outcomes of the project. You need to know what the stakeholders are looking for. Kind of important. How are you going to figure out who your users are if you don't know what the stakeholders are trying to accomplish. So it's really important. Remember that the stakeholder interviews occur before user research. You're trying to figure out what the product is about, what domain it's in. So the type of information you're going to gather from stakeholders is what's the primary product vision? What is their vision of this product and what it will do? Also, what is the budget and schedule? Now, a lot of people kind of look at that and they're like, oh, numbers. It's like accounting, right? Can't I just like create it? Who thinks that's a good idea? Mm, yeah. I know that you're being sarcastic. Right, it's not a good idea because this has a major effect on your design. Major, major, major. If uh, you have a budget of $10,000, you're not going to want to design something that would need a budget of $100,000, right? If you have something that would take, I don't know, six months to build, and they tell you you have six weeks, think that's going to affect your design? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Also, technical constraints and opportunities. This is something we're pretty familiar with. Right, so is it going to be on a server? Is it going to be on a handheld? Do we need to deal with network traffic? What are some of the technological constraints? What are some of the advantages we may have? Is it going to be on a server farm where we have unlimited storage, but maybe limited bandwidth? Right, so we need to think about those things. What are the business drivers? Now, this is another thing that technology people tend not to like to look at because we think it's kind of boring. But like it or not, it actually is important. We need to know why are the stakeholders interested in this in terms of the business? Because very rarely are you going to have someone who comes to you and says, I want to build this product and pay you to build it because it will be fun. How often do you think that happens? Not very often. I've heard of it, I think, once. Most of the time there is a business driver behind it. You need to understand what that is. And what are the stakeholders' perceptions of the user? Who do they think the users are? This is going to give you an insight into where you can start looking in terms of your users. Keeping in mind that their perceptions may not necessarily be correct, but it gives you a starting point. Then there are subject matter experts. Right? We've talked about experts in this class before, right? And We've talked about how it is important to talk to our subject matter experts. Right, so subject matter experts are experts in the domain in which the product will operate. Now, they can provide us with a lot of very rich information, but what is a drawback, or I should say a potential limitation that we've previously talked about we need to keep in mind with subject matter experts? Anyone remember? Right, they may not be current users of the product. Right, so they may have, may have been using the product for 10 years, but they haven't used it in the past two years. It's very important to remember. Also, do you think they are like your typical perpetual intermediates? They're not. 
So you do need to remember that. But they are still very important. And remember when we talked about beginners, intermediates, and experts, the majority of time when you're working in industry and when you're working for someone and you say, I need to talk to one of the users, the majority of the time they're going to send you a subject matter expert, not you know, your average user. You want to keep that in mind. The other thing you want to remember is that they are very knowledgeable about the domain. But who is the expert when it comes to design? It's supposed to be you guys. You guys are the ones who are the experts. If you're the designer, you're the one who has that knowledge. They may be experts about the domain, but you want to remember they're not designers because some of them will start designing for you. And what they design is not necessarily what's going to work for the users. So, has anyone experienced something like that before? No? Just wait. Now, what do you think you should do when you are dealing with a subject matter expert and they are making design suggestions? You don't want to take it outside. No, you need to be nice to your subject matter experts. Tell them you will consider it. Oh, that's really interesting. We'll definitely look into this and consider it. Because, you know, they're experts and they like having their egos stroked. You know, like when you're nice to me when I'm standing up here and you laugh at my stupid jokes. Right? All right, so with your domain experts, they are sometimes going to try to design the product. You need to be very politically correct and polite. Very important. Without committing to anything. Don't commit to anything. Now, Subject matter experts are especially needed when you're dealing with either very specialized or very complex domains. Right, so the medical domain is a perfect example where you really need to talk to subject matter experts, not just in the medical domain itself, but if you are dealing with a particular focused area of a domain, say with oncology, you need to speak to a subject matter expert in oncology because they're going to be able to tell you things that a pediatrician will not. So it's really important to keep that in mind. So you will also want to make sure that when you are talking to your subject matter experts and when you're talking to the people who are giving you access to them that they understand it's not a one-shot deal. You really need access to them throughout the design process. It's more intensive in the beginning, but you do want access to them throughout the process so that when a question comes up or there are changes that need to be made, you can go back to them and get more information. Because I don't care how brilliant you are, you will always have holes in the information that you gather. Because things always come up and changes always have to occur. You want to be able to access them. So that's another reason to be nice. Right. Any questions so far? <laughs> 